Welcome back to Let's Play Alan Wake. Again! I'm Burning Dog Face. And, uh, Alice is still kidnapped, uh, the dark is still rising, and Alan may or may not be losing his fucking mind, but at least we've got one person on our side. We've got Alan's uh, agent, Barry Wheeler, all the way from New York, here to back up and be slightly concerned about us. Or snowshoes. They really do work, by the way. I've tried those. Well, not that pair, but you know what I mean. <laughs> spreads out the, uh... Spreads out your weight across a much wider, flatter area so you don't sink into the snow. That's a thick-ass book for such a small town. Maybe it's got tons of history. Yoink! Complimentary, I guess. I guess someone's in there. That's not creepy at all. I was kind of hoping I'd be able to push a button and that thing would start singing, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Was that? Of course that was a thing in 2010. Brain trust. Um... Yeah, so I thought I saw a shimmer down here, like there was a, uh... Manuscript page on this coffee table. What are those? Historical Elderwood and Elderwood National Park. How does that plant stay alive? Hang in there, little dude! Another broken clock, that's not weird at all. That's not! That's really, really not! As soon as I realize, oh, that means turn them off, not turn more on. In fact, let's throw some more food in the wire. Fine, let's get out of here. Why are they on the outside of the house? Those could just get ripped off and... S oh, hey! Complimentary uh, barbecue. I mean, I don't think it has any gas, but, you know, that's not bad. Are people who really, really, really like camping... Uh, likely to bring along their own propane, or... Is that just a modeling error? I mean, I guess you don't leave it on the thing because, you know, it's expensive shit, but, uh... Well, at least we're not getting any references to the ring. That was, what, 2000? So I guess that wasn't topical anymore. Mind you, this is not based on Japanese horror. This is very much based on American horror. You know, given the, uh... Developers being Finnish and all that. I'm not sure of their obsession with the States. Maybe it's just because they know that's, like, where the target audience lives, you know? But they seem to be really interested in homaging these, like, uniquely American forms of, uh, storytelling. Like, uh you know, noir fiction, or, uh... Well, like, the way Stephen King writes horror stories about ordinary people in small-town America. And, I mean, okay, best-selling author. Here, Al. I'll hold down the fort. He's loud. I'll be with you in spirit every step of the way, Al. Walk through the door now. You do that, and for the love of God, do not let anyone in if they're babbling. Oh, I could bring this to him. I could just show him this. Yeah, not really. Barry doubts Wake's sanity. Yeah, we just saw that, didn't we? Barry had never gotten along with Alice, but he knew Alan loved her with an almost frightening intensity. Oh, boy. And now something had happened to Alice. And here was Al armed with a gun and saying things people got put in padded cells for. It was as if his friend had experienced a massive psychotic episode and was now totally disconnected from reality. It scared the shit out of Barry. Fucking hell. So, which is more terrifying? That Alan knew everything that was going to happen in advance, or that things are happening this way because they're written in the manuscript? Because I don't like either of those possibilities, frankly. I mean, I know exactly what's going on here, but I'm not exactly going to, uh... 
Just I spell it all out for you guys. This wasn't the smartest thing I'd ever done, but I was still angry with Barry for trying to talk me out of it. These people had called me right in the sheriff's station. The cops wouldn't scare them. Good point. And they had Alice. Ooh. Ooh. I was just sort of sliding. I'm still sliding. What the fuck? A controller drift or something? Huh. No, that side's locked. Actually, it looks... The loading screen said cars with their lights on inside can be driven. I don't think I can drive this. Barry had the keys to the car he rented. It wasn't a long walk to the visitor center, and it wouldn't be any use to me in the forest. That's a point. Yes, the uh, we're going to Lover's Peak, which is apparently at the end of the nature trail. Which immediately brings a Weird Al song to mind, and unless something really spectacular happens, I have a feeling that the title of the song will be the name of this episode. I think there were ravens or crows or something in that there. Maybe that one with the garbage tightly packed at the bottom. Well, I don't know. Maybe someone stomped on it to make more room. I do that sometimes if I'm wearing slippers. Whoa. There's actually something in there. I just figured the windows would be blacked over. Uh, sorry if I'm interrupting anything. No, there's no one here. Welcome back to the show, folks. As promised, our very own Dr. Nelson has just parked his rear end in the studio. Doc, what's your Deerfest plan like? My plan? You make it sound a lot more organized than I ever seem to manage. <laughs> oh. Oh. No plan, really. Just taking the atmosphere. I'm getting a little too rickety to do much more than that, you know. Oh, tell me about it. No sat race for us older gentlemen, huh? <laughs> yes, exactly, Bat. But I'm gonna check out the parade, of course. And I'll be one of the pie contest judges, too. <laughs> ah, well, that takes a different kind of constitution. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's my kind of exercise. Now, Doc, seriously, you're in pretty good shape, though. You're the outdoors type. I, I know for a fact you're an avid fisherman. That's right. Matter of fact, just caught a heck of a large mouth bass early this morning. But you're not taking part in the fishing contest? No, no, not this year. Um, see, Pat, I'm just not that competitive anymore. Now I just like to take my time and enjoy the peace of it. It's no fun if I need to worry about what I'm catching, you know? I can respect that. <laughs> Considering your track record, the participants are probably pretty happy you feel that way. <laughs> well, Pat, that's kind of you to say. Shout out to Elthwar, who left a comment about the Toby broadcast, saying... Oh! Okay, there's a Taken outside. Ahem! Uh, saying, uh, when the radio turned on, I expected him to already be corrupted and for it to be a horror broadcast, rather than learning about a dog to be worried for. And then adding, I strongly suspect that the Taken aren't going to ignore a dog. They seem to be interested in movable bodies more than intelligent hosts. All right, let's kill this guy. Oh, that was scripted, wasn't it? He's just gone. Okay, fuck that. Hey, you want to do something really crazy? Let's do something stupid and save power. Oh god, oh god, oh god. <laughs> we might need that power tomorrow. This place is... Oh, no, I guess there are power lines. But still! The less power draw, probably the better. Well, that I was looking straight at. Oh, boy. 
Earthquake. That's awesome. Yep. Check. Still rising. Whatever is creating the Taken, this dark presence, it's still getting stronger. It was described by the light as waking up. I don't th even think it's all the way awake right now. That's the most horrifying part. This is what it's doing in the, oh, all right, I'm awake, I'm awake, you know, groggy uh, state. Okay, they're definitely not just hunting Alan. Please tell me this wasn't the birds. Why is this room, like... Oh. They attacked these people so hard they tore up the, uh... The beds. Nothing. Let me guess, the switch doesn't work. All right, then I'll turn on the TV. Oh, it's that time again. Crime and punishment. The cancer and cure of civilization. But some crimes are impossible to punish, especially in Night Springs. You get that I'm not pointing it at the screen so it's not blurry, right? The man in the mirror. He's inside, Agent. He's a weird one. So, you're confessing to killing that guy, huh? Why? And it coming? Yeah, but why would you do that? I mean, you're a nice guy. Normal. Took a kid to a soccer game. So how come at the game, you pick a guy and, quoting from the arresting officer's report here, Assault the victim's head area repeatedly with the weapon of choice being a pair of bare fists. Wow, that sentence really flows, huh? Maybe you're not the literary type. Okay, so you mess him up. But why? Who was that guy? We couldn't ID him. Why would a guy like you do him like that? I didn't like his face? Well, you must have hated it, because you really went to town there. I mean, there's no way to tell what he looked like. No ID on him either. That must be difficult. But then we ran the fingerprints. Got a match. Your prints. Identical. Huh. How about that? Your son said you were wearing a white shirt when you took him to the game. But the white shirt is on the dead guy. It's plenty red now. You won't get away with this. Do you really think that's in any way relevant to me? I had plenty of time to talk to my boy before the cops arrived, you know? He won't stop screaming, am I right? You think he's ever gonna be okay? <laughs> I left my mark. Believe me. You, you bastard. What? You gonna shoot me? What's the point? I'm going to prison. You got me. I... I don't understand any of this. And you never will. Don't worry. Maybe you'll see me again, Agent. No outro. You can see why Ellen's a fan of... Oh, God! Yeah, it was the birds, all right. I was kind of hoping it was the Taken breaking into the axes, but no, the fucking forest is attacking people now. What was that? Moonshine cave. Wait, did they really just 
They vanished into thin air because I backed up too close to ambient light. It's like a patch of moonlight or something. I guess I just assumed because it's a video game that it was going to start ringing. There is a page there. I'm just looking around this corner. Do not field wildlife. Do not feel. Yeah. Do not feed wildlife even. Oh, there's a fucking lot of pages in this chapter, and I do love that they're all out of order. Uh, Rose and Rusty. Rose knew that Rusty was in love with her, oh. and she liked him too. She liked him a lot. He taught her to dance, and life had certainly taught her the value of a man who was gentle. He treated her well, made her smile, made her feel good. But Rusty wasn't the prince of her dreams, and that tended to underline the unbearable truth. She was no closer to that Hollywood magic than he was. My heart. No. I can't tell if that's a sadly it's just not to be kind of thing, or if it's a thing where her expectations are too high because of movies and TV. And either way, it's not a great scene. I feel bad for both of them. And another! It's an oddly large amount of light. Rusty dying. Well. The air in the visitor center was heavy with an awful smell, as if some rotten drowned thing had crawled up from its grave. Rusty kept coughing blood. My eyes were drawn to the twisted shape of his broken leg. The attack had been vicious. Max whined in his cage. Rusty's eyes were wild with fear and terror. He gasped. Mr. Wake, it happened just the way it was on that page. The story has officially gotten recursive now. The characters in the manuscript are aware of the manuscript. And it's not just Alan. Oh, yeah, you know, in fact, it's just now occurred to me to wonder why there's a car pulled to the side of the road with all of its doors yanked open. I think the Taken pulled some people out of their car. we can do. The page is called Rusty Dying. He's gonna say that, and then he's going to die. Anybody? Help me! Help! Help me! Oh, God damn it! Curse my collecting... Can you hear me? Jeans. Rusty attacked by the Dark Presence. The visitor center was sturdy, but the impact turned the front of the building into splinters. Rusty was thrown across the lobby like a rag doll and hit the far wall hard. It didn't hurt until he tried to move and saw his leg bend the wrong way, felt the broken ribs stabbing him on the inside. Rusty howled in pain and fear, suddenly afraid to die alone. God, please help! What in the fuck ran into this thing? Fucked up the whole front of the building. Oh, throwing cars around now. Back here. I'm back here. Hey, please help me. Holy Jesus! All that blood. Mr. Wake. <laughs> oh hell! It happened just the way it was on that page. I found came true. It knew. So dark. It'll come back for me. You must. The lights. In the office. I, I have the key. Okay, Rusty. Hang on. I'll be right back. Whatever did this couldn't be far. Rusty had found a page from the manuscript. Ugh. It would help me understand what had happened. 
Okay, I guess I was wrong about that. The, uh, because of all the lore and such, this episode is delayed. The title to next time. Uh, I'm gonna take that. You okay, Shh. Max? Good boy. Ah! Uh. You see? Good person! Uh, where is the office? It's, no, it's the kitchen. Uh... Oh, the fog. Oh, he really did get thrown across the far fucking wall. Yeah, he must have been standing right here when that happened. Jesus, there's dirt and... blood everywhere. I'm surprised the mammoth is intact. Although it did scatter the hats and plushies. And it caved in the, uh, the desk. Fuck! Well, we'll cross the way. The only way to make sure that Rusty was safe was to get the power running and the lights back on. I was kind of expecting a machete to go flying past my head as I opened the door, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, let me guess, it's exactly what's about to happen as I go through that door. Wake reaches a safe haven of light! At the last instant, I changed direction and threw myself down. The axe splintered the trunk of a tree. I stumbled into the pool of bright light. My lungs burned. I was too exhausted to move. I tensed as I waited for the killing blow, but it never came. I raised my head. Nothing moved in the darkness beyond. For the moment, bathed in the cold light, I was safe. You know, with the way that he was depicted as this, you know, brilliant scientist who was uh, used for uh, exposition and sometimes for comic relief as uh, Dr. Casper Darling, I kind of forgot exactly how unsettling a picture Matthew Peretta could paint with just his voice. Fucking A, man. Tensed as I waited for the killing blow, but it never came. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, borrow this. Ah! too late. Someone had destroyed the circuit breaker. There was no way to get the lights back on. Rusty! Rusty! Oh no. I'm Burning Dog Face, and I will see you next time on Let's Play Alan Wake again when we go back over there and find out what has become of poor Rusty. May he rest in peace once I'm done with him. Stay in the light. <laughs>